Hey all. In this lab we're going to talk about uh, <clears throat> having multiple ISPs, um, but we've got a Cisco ASA firewall in the equation. Um, in the scenario that I had, the, uh, the client already had the ASA, and uh, they, however, want to have multiple ISP connections. So if this is a Juniper, for example, uh, an SSG, we wouldn't have a problem because uh, the Junipers can do PBR right in their SSGs. <clears throat> the uh, Cisco's a little bit behind though and the ASA can't. So uh, I've been playing around with an idea, uh, something like this, which works fine and uh, it might be the solution we go with in the end. I thought I'd lab it and throw it up on YouTube for you. So we've got uh, PC1, this is the internal switch, then our ASA, external switch, and then we've got a Cisco router, four interface router. And the router connects to ISP1, ISP2, and ISP3 goes to a switch representing the internet for us and then a server that we're using to test to. Um, so everything's pre-configured uh, you know, for the sake of time and the length and size of a YouTube video. So uh, I'm just going to kind of show you the config as opposed to having to configure it in this, uh, in this lab. Um, so we'll just go to the ASA first, right? So we have, uh, you know, again, in this scenario, three ISPs and I've put the, uh, the ISPs here. So our primary ISP has, uh, you know, triple one triple one triple one slash 24 our ISP 2 will be uh, 112 112 112 slash 24 and ISP 3 113 113 113 slash 24 um, so you know the AACs can't hold secondary uh, addresses on the interfaces so we have uh, 111 111 111 as uh, the actual interface IP and then what we're doing is uh, NAT globals for the rest so we have uh, global outside one interface so uh, anyone imagine the first global is going to get uh, you know the 111 address global outside 2 goes to uh, ISP2 interface or subnet while well, the 112 and then uh, out, uh, NAT, or global outside 3 is going to get added to uh, the third ISP subnet the 113 subnet there um, so what we're doing is uh, the NAT statements you know they're they're pointing to access list, right? So to make things easy, I've just pointed you know NAT one to ISP one, NAT two to ISP two, NAT three to ISP three, and named the NAT ACLs the same, right? So ISP one, um, anyone going anywhere um, on port eighty will be NATed to the interface IP. Again, that's the one 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 dot one, and therefore it should go out the ISP one connection, right? So stateful connections coming back will be routed back this way. You know how many loops going on breaking TCP sessions. Um, ISP2, anyone going anywhere on SSH will uh, hit the global 2 and be added to 112 and go out ISP2 interface. And then ISP3, anyone going out on uh, SSL will be uh, global to the uh, um, ISP3 subnet, right? So uh, Three NAT insides um, pointing to the ACLs ISP123. Remember, they're NATing ISP123 in order is for ADS, SSH, and HTTPS in this lab for testing and globaling to the subnets for the appropriate ISP. So, again, the, IS, the uh, ASA doesn't do uh, PBR, right? So, we just have a default route outside pointing to our Cisco router. If we hop over to that router, um, yeah, router one. So what we did in here is um, four interface, right? So F00 is on our uh, primary subnet. That's our default gateway here for the ASA. Um, uh, zero, 01, I just put 32 or 30 bit masks. So uh, there's one interface here, one interface, one interface here for each ISP, right? <clears throat> we have a, uh, I just routed back towards the ASA for the uh, 112, 113 subnets so that, uh, you know, coming back needs to know how to get there. So it goes to the primary uh, um, internet IP on dot one, which is the outside of the ASA. Um, we have a default route uh, to get anywhere, go to 172.112, which is ISP1. And then we have route maps to take care of the rest. So I made uh, access list 102, which permits if you're coming from 112, right? So if you're going out um, uh, the ASA, remember ISP2, we, we were having the, um, the NAT inside 
statement match and actual says that said anyone going anywhere on port 22. So again, we have a route map now that says uh, uh, down here. Uh, match address 102, next hop, 172.116, ISP2. So if you're but if you've been added by the ASA to this so in this subnet and you're on that port, you're gonna match the match the route map and go to ISP2. Um, 103, access list 103 matches the other uh, route map here to go to 172.1.110, which is ISP3. And again, uh, in the firewall, it was anyone going on SSL port. And so here we've got if you're coming from that subnet, if the ASA added you there, going anywhere on SSL, you hit ISP3. And so we'll just show you uh, show you that working, I guess, right? So if we do a telnet to we're telnetting again over to this server, test server on the twenty 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 subnet on the internet um, on eighty. We have an open connection. Um, you can see. Oops, sorry, you can't see. Down here, I have the server, and uh, we're just doing a debug server one. You can see that we've got connections from triple one, triple one, triple one um, coming in. So it's perfect. That's working fine. In uh, router one, sorry, we can do a show route map. Um, ISP is what I call it. So you have no hits here and here, which is access to 102, 103, which is perfect. So it's taking the default route over to ISP one and it's hitting this server like we just saw in the debug. So we'll just get out of there. And if we do now SSH, and uh, remember this should be taken ISP2. Um, hmm, didn't type that right. Anyway, you can see we were connected. <clears throat> so we're connected to server one now. Um, again in router one. So if we look here now, we're actually getting matched packets on uh, the route map for access list 102 which again was SSH and here you go we've been added to the 112 IP address and uh, we'll quit out of there we'll do one last telnet to uh, server 1 on uh, 443 All right so that's an open connection we come into the uh, server debug and you can see we've been added to the 113 and in the router if we look at the route map now we got five match packets on access list 103. So, if uh, if you get faced with a scenario and you have to you have to use an ASA that's existing and they want to have more than one ISP, you could go this route, right? Have your uh, PBR done on this router here, so you can PBR the post added IP. So you get added to whatever ISP subnet you want, and then PBR it here to get out to the right um, the right ISP. And you know it's flexible because they're ACL, so you can do denies above and permits, and you can get uh, and get everything going where you want it because it's very flexible with the access list rules. Okay, thanks for watching.